Large language models, or LLMs, are powerful when used correctly, which begs the question, how do we configure LLMs to perform exactly what we want? In this video, we'll explore the techniques for controlling LLM outputs for better performance and reliability. Let's dive into the best techniques to this day to control your LLM output. LLMs are useless if you don't tune them correctly for your use case, especially if you want to commercialize them into a paid product. Tailoring these models to your specific use case is not only essential, but also achievable through various free ways to make them better and more specialized to your goals. Before doing anything, try to identify a few examples of how you want your model to respond. Craft a handful of questions and answers or user chatbot exchanges you want to replicate. Then. Test your base model, whether it be GPT-4, an open source model like Llama 2, or yours trained from scratch. You will be able to see some flaws and know what to improve from there. Once you have your examples and know where it fails, start playing with the decoding parameters. Indeed, you can adjust and tune several parameters to influence your model's generations, like temperature, stop sequences, a frequency penalty, and a presence penalty. Let's start with temperature. It regulates the output's randomness. A value below 1 yields more deterministic outputs, while a value above 1 introduces greater variations in these outputs. But how does it work? When the model makes a prediction, it generates a vector of probabilities for each possible token in its vocabulary. The next generated token is then sampled from this distribution according to its probabilities. You can easily adjust the token probability distribution using the temperature parameter. Use a temperature value below 1 to further increase the probability of the most likely token. This has the effect of making the output more deterministic. Lower temperature values are often used when you are doing summarization or question answering over your documents. Conversely, if you want to get more creative outputs, raise the temperature value over 1 to make other tokens more likely to be sampled. High value of temperatures are used whenever you want creative answers, such as when you are using the model as a writing assistant. As a conclusion, temperature is just a knob for controlling the trade-off between diversity, high temperature, and accuracy, low temperature, in the generated text. Next, you can tweak the stop sequences. These are just a set of character sequences that halt the text generation process once they appear in the output of the model. Utilizing stop sequences allows you to influence both the length and structural properties of the generated text. Stop sequences are very useful if your prompt teaches the model to reason and ask for external documents before giving the final answer. Indeed, by using an appropriate stop sequence, the model correctly stops generating text right after it has asked for a document, which you can retrieve and append its text to the conversation. This is leverage in the popular React framework. In the React framework, the LLM is prompted to answer a request by decomposing it into sequential simpler steps, which can be solved using external tools one step at a time. For example, for an LLM appropriately instruct with a React prompt, upon the request, I need to search Apple Remote and find the program it was originally designed to interact with, the following would happen. First, the LLM decides to use the search tool, generates a query like Apple Remote, and then stops generating text using a stop sequence. Then, we give a relevant text passage to the LLM, copying it into the conversation. Third, the LLM reads the text passage, notices that it doesn't have the final answer yet, but discovers that Apple Remote was designed to control the front row program. So the LLM decides to use the search tool again, this time with the query front row, and then again stops generating text using a stop sequence. The previous reasoning and observation steps continue alternating until the LLM is able to give Give the final answer to the original request. Another parameter to consider is the frequency penalty. By increasing its value, you can deter the model from repeating tokens that have already been used frequently in the generated text. A positive value discourages the model from being repetitive, whereas a negative value may encourage it to repeat the same word or IDs. Lastly, you have the presence penalty, which is pretty similar and will discourage the model from repeating any token that has already appeared in the generated text. So this is a bit more strict and not related to multiple repetitions. 
repetitions and will discourage a single repetition of the same word or token. In other words, it rewards the presence of new or infrequent tokens in the output sequence. A positive value encourages the model to use rare or uncommon words, whereas a negative value discourages the model from using unique or novel words, kind of dumbing it down. Aside from these parameters, decoding methods are fundamental strategies used by LLMs to generate text. Each method has its unique advantages and limitations. You need to choose the best method for your LLM and use case. At each decoding step, or when you generate a new word, the LLM gives a score to each of its vocabulary tokens, where a high score is related to a high probability of that token being the next token, according to the patterns learned by the model during training. However, is the token with the highest probability always the best token to predict? By predicting the best token at step 1, the model may then find only tokens with low probabilities at step 2, thus having a low joint probability of the two consecutive tokens. Instead, it could be that predicting a slightly lower token at step 1 leads to a high probability token at step 2, thus having an overall higher joint probability of the tokens. Ideally, we'd want to do these computations for all the tokens in the model vocabulary and for a large number of steps. Unfortunately, this cannot be done in practice because it will require way too many computations. Therefore, you should know that there are different decoding methods that try to find the right balance between being greedy and instantly selecting the next token with high probability. Some of these methods are greedy decoding, top case sampling, and nucleus sampling, versus doing a bit of exploration and trying to predict more tokens at once. A popular method for this is beam search. Now that you've played with all the parameters and figured out the best combination possible, you hopefully have no problems anymore with your model. That would be too good to be true. And fortunately, there are still other things you can do super easily and cheaply to further improve the outputs all related to prompt engineering. So yes, this is a real thing. Prompts can have a huge impact on your model's outputs and be a game changer for your application. Here are the best techniques you can leverage that I've discovered over time and from multiple resources like the LLM course we've built, which I will introduce later, and the amazing learnprompting.org resource, both completely free online resources. A key part of prompt engineering is defining a reliable system prompt, which sets the conditions and guidelines you will give to your model, such as you are a friendly chatbot answering all questions as accurately as possible without harming anyone and not answering questions about specific people or violent topics, which is basically the system prompt used in ChatGPT. Well, in a very simplified version, of course. You can give the model any kind of role or type of personality to impersonate. You can even specify conditions for its response, formatting, and tons of other details about what and how you expect it to answer. A second very interesting and powerful prompting technique is few shot prompting. This is where you give it examples of how you want it to answer. It can be one to a handful of user chatbot interactions like the ones you've built for the first step and ask the model to do similarly for the next upcoming user inputs. A third option that is related to the second one is called chain of thought prompting where you also give examples to the model, but here it will be detailed examples where you basically show the model how it should think. This one is powerful for math-related questions. It's basically like asking it to think step by step, which simplifies a complex problem into multiple simpler ones. By the way, you can also literally ask it to think it step by step, which is called a zero-shot chain of thought since you don't give it specific examples. But it has been seen to also help with arithmetic, common sense, and symbolic reasoning tasks nonetheless. Another interesting approach that I discovered, thanks to learn prompting, is called self-consistency. Here, you basically ask the model multiple times and take the most recurring answer. It's just like model ensembling if you are familiar with this approach, but in the prompting world. Just like you would gather information and facts about a topic to then build a text around it for a school dissertation, you can do the same with LLMs. You can ask it to generate a few interesting facts about a specific topic and then ask to use them to write a blog article on this topic. This approach called Generated Knowledge shows improvements in various common sense datasets. Another super cool prompting approach from the Learn Prompting resource team. And voila! Now, if your LLM is not perfect, it's your fault.
I'm kidding. LLMs are very complex to adapt and make work as expected. If you are still experiencing issues at this point, especially related to hallucinations or biases, you can try using Retrieval Augmented Generations or Deep Memory by ActiveLoop. Here, you will need documentation and basically only allow the LLM to query it and respond if the answer to the question is inside the documentation. This is pretty much the best way to control your outputs and make your model safer and aligned. A last alternative would be to fine tune your model on your specific task. We discuss both these topics in other videos of this series, as well as in-depth coding examples for both RAG and fine tuning on our LLM course. If you want to see those practical examples on how you can control the behavior of your model and better understand how LLMs really work, I highly recommend our free course developed in collaboration with TowardsAI Active Loop and the Intel Disruptor Initiative. In this super practical course, you'll learn how to train, fine tune, and really optimize large language models and make the most of them. I also want to give a quick shout out to the learnprompting.org team for their amazing resource that I recommend you to go through if your job involves LLMs. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you next time with more exciting AI techniques.